Hey, hey, hi everybody. Welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. My name is Corey Ashton here at Webtegrity in San Antonio, Texas. And it is time for us to move into Revolution Slider 5.0 and beyond. I'm actually going to be looking at 5.1 today. So this is October 2015. Back in, I believe, around August of this year, the Theme Punch guys, who are the authors of the Revolution Slider, released the 5.0 version. And if you were used to Rev, Rev Slider prior to this, you know it drastically changed the entire user interface. The capabilities went through the roof. We were already in love with this amazing product as a slideshow, but now it has given us means of displaying content and um, just radically changing the look of any theme for that matter inside of your WordPress website in just a couple of clicks. However, I know that it is kind of option overload. There's a lot going on. There are things kind of hidden and different layers going on. So I just want, kind of want to step by step take us through what it looks like uh, to look at the basics of the Revolution Slider 5.1 and hopefully up uh, before, until these guys uh, take us to the next level even. So uh, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Of course, I'm talking about the slider revolution. A lot of us call it the Rev Slider. Um, it is a premium plugin that offers a slideshow for your website. $19 would get you a, a regular license to use it on one website. If you wanted to extend the support, it's just five bucks, 70 cents more in US dollars to go ahead and get access to the Theme Punch guys, their support team, and you would do that through the support tab here and kind of walk through how they're asking you to connect with them uh, if you had questions specifically about the slider. So you can leave your questions in the comment box below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability, but I'm not the developer. I'm just a user of this product who has fallen in love with the power behind it. It's just incredible. And now 5.1 and beyond is, is mind blowing. So if you're running an older version than that, and as soon as you are watching this video and you think mine doesn't look anything like this, I'll put a link right here to the older versions if you're running the older version, but I will warn you that you need to go ahead and update your version. There were some security issues that took place early on in some of the older versions, so I want you to be sure that you're running the most recent up-to-date version of the Revolution Slider. So if you're not, or if you purchased a theme that had it inside of it and it's an older version, you need to connect with that theme's author and ask them to get you access to the most recent version of the Rev Slider just for security purposes completely for your website. So let's take a look really briefly about what some of the capabilities are inside of the Rev Slider and why we're completely in love with it. I'm gonna do a refresh on this page so you can see things begin to fly in, fade in, slide up. Look at all the movement there. All of these things are simply in layers. And that's how the Revolution Slider uh, just packs an incredible punch, allowing you to easily um, get through content, see things, and um, I'm gonna show you this one right here. This one has, this was a pretty standard slideshow. It's got these cool little thumbnails down here happening. And I'll let it kind of play through so you can get an idea of how spectacular it is. Did you see that transition? Look at that kind of fade up. And, and then anything that moves over, you see this parallax with the, the text hovering over the image. Then we begin to see this option with the Ken's, Ken Burns where things just kind of move around smooth on the page and it almost looks like we're flying through the page. It's pretty spectacular. Then of course, we all know that inside the Rev Slider you can add video, whether it's a YouTube video or a short snippet of video that you might have even on your server space, a Vimeo video, you can just easily and simply add in the URL of the video and it'll make the video appear back here and you can lay text over it. This, these are just some of the very quick reasons why I have fallen in love with the Rev Slider and we use it consistently across the board for students and for our clients. So let's look at what it looks like to actually use the Rev Slider. Um, I've already installed it, so if you're unfamiliar with that process, I will put a link in the description box below to documentation that walks you through how to go purchase. Uh, you take that zipped file, go to your plugins area, say add new, and just install it and activate it. Once you've done that, there will be a tab here on the left side of your navigation now that says uh, Slider Revolution. Clicking on that gets you to this screen 
and uh, you might not even have a new slider set here yet. I've already been playing around with one, but I'm going to go ahead and click Add New to kind of walk you through what the new settings are for the Rev Slider. Right away again, things some things look familiar. We had this panel on older versions, um, but all of these panels here are different options. Um, your first option is your content con uh, content source. So where are we getting the content from? A standard slideshow is just going to be your default option here. But again, some of the things that are just incredible with this newer version of the Slider Revolution is um, we have these two options that you can actually pull different posts, which are from your blog area, specific posts if you'd want to display them dynamically in your slideshow. But now the guys at Theme Punch have added in a Flickr stream, a feed from your Instagram page. Your uh, WooCommerce is coming soon, so you'll be able to add products dynamically. You've got your Twitter stream or your feed from Twitter. Facebook, YouTube videos can be displayed here, and Vimeo. I'll walk through these options as we go further on in this series, so be sure to subscribe to my channel to get uh, more details on those individual ones. For now, for the sake of this uh, video, I'm just going to go ahead and use the default slider settings and we'll walk through what those look like. Here is where we would actually start to type in the, the name of our slideshow and you'd want to give it something unique so you have an idea of maybe where you're going to be placing this. Um, and for now, we'll say home page. And then you'll want to create an alias for it. And this could be the same thing if you'd like or an abbreviated version of it. And this version right here is actually what creates this short code. This short code is what you would copy and paste and uh, you'd paste it into the page or post or sidebar or widget box that you would want this slideshow to appear. So you can just read that right here. Place this short code where you want the slider to appear basically, where you want it to show up. So you copy that on your clipboard, right mouse click, copy that, and you would paste it on any page or any post, and dynamically, boom, your slider would appear really beautifully. All right, so going down through here though, now we have three new options that can be a little confusing and you wonder, well, what do they actually mean? A standard slider is actually just a slideshow, things that, that would rotate through, you can put some text on there, but you want movement, you want transition between topics or between slides. A hero scene, or this is something that we're seeing trending right now, really beautifully done, where we're having just one large picture across um, your entire home page with uh, some text laid on it with maybe a button that people can click on and get inside your website. So a really nice option here that the hero scene basically is going to be used. This option here would be used if you do not want uh, transitioning slides. If you just wanted one really beautiful picture or perhaps one snippet of video playing back there with some text laid over it and you need no transition happening. So that would be your option that you would select here and then go through the rest of the, the options to create it. Or a carousel slider uh, would be used if you want to actually transition between different slides all on one screen. So you've seen things like maybe our affiliates and you would have all of their logos on there and you want them to be able to slide and, and transition back and forth and you can see that kind of in a carousel setting. So this is kind of like a three in one deal that you get for $19 right now. That's the price over on Code Canyon, 19 bucks US dollars for you to purchase this. What a powerful punch you get inside of your theme. This is compatible pretty much with any theme I've ever put it in. It has never broken any theme I've ever uh, put this inside of. So it's pretty phenomenal. Moving down the screen, uh, we'll go ahead and then be able to choose. Let me go back here to standard slider. We'll be able to choose then your slide layout. If you just want it to be automatic, you can leave it there. If you want to test around and play around with what these options could be, feel free to tinker with those and, and play around with what those options could be. Uh, the other thing that I really, really like about this, as we scroll down here, you have some options to overwrite the max height or the max width. The max height is something that I use pretty regularly. You can drop in here and maybe say that the max height of the entire slideshow needs to be maybe 400 or 500 
pixels tall so that no matter how large of an image you put in there, it's kind of going to constrain it a little bit and allow you to have an, a nice area on your home page or whatever page for that matter uh, to kind of be constrained in. And then just scrolling down the page, you can go ahead and click save settings. These are just some advanced settings here. You can read through these to see if you want to really go way nerdy and, and get deeper into customizing this particular slideshow. You can click save settings here or if you've noticed here on the right side, we also have this option to click save settings. Once that's done, you can then go into your slider, uh, individual slides, and begin to set them up and create what they're going to look like. Um, this area here offers, again, a lot of options. What I'm going to encourage you to do is don't be overwhelmed. Just begin to read down through each one. Look at each one and see what the options are that are offered. Maybe you need to address them. Maybe you don't need to address them. It's okay kind of out of the box, it works. You just need to see how you might want to customize it for your particular website. One of the easiest things to do right away is just go ahead and put in a background image. So I'll go ahead and click change image here, which will allow us to access our media library. Or if you don't have any pictures yet, you'll just go here and upload photos into your media library. And we'll grab a larger image and click insert. And then if we scroll down, we begin to see the window where we're starting to build our entire slideshow and you can play around with uh, adding layers. That's what you're going to do is you simply just add a layer. So this would be your option here. If you wanted to add text, you would click text. If you want to put another image inside of this slider, you can do that. If you want to add a button, they've got some presets now here to add buttons in here. So let's just simply add text. we can add text. Clicking out of the box allows you to move it around, drag it around to wherever you'd like it to appear. And if you don't really like the black text, maybe you want it to make it white or a different font even, you've got some options up here at the top. As long as you have selected the layer that you want to change, you can come up here and play around with all these different options that would affect that one particular layer. So I'll go through here. You've got some standard fonts that are in here. You also have something spectacular that, again, these guys just kind of went above and beyond and gave you access to Google fonts. Um, so I really like the font uh, Questrial. So we'll go down here to the Qs. All the way down here, of course, toward the bottom. Oops, I already passed it. Go up. Railway's nice, too. Uh, Questrial, there we go. Click that. It's going to load it, so a nice, clean, simple font. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color now to be white. And so now you can see exactly what that's going to look like uh, sitting here. And of course, you can add animation to any layer possible. So you would click the Animation tab and begin to see what that looks like. Here are your options here, all sorts of options for animations on how it uh, comes in and how it leaves uh, the scene of the website. You can also manipulate the timing. So if you don't want it to fade in that quickly, you can set this to a higher number and allow that to fade a little bit slowly kind of fading in and out a little bit slowly, staying on the screen longer. Um, animation speed here, fading out. What does that look like? And you can kind of play around with those options. If you wanted to see what it would look like um, in a preview setting, on the right side over here, you have a little tab that pops out for preview. There it is. And of course, then all you would do is add the next slide. So clicking out of the preview mode, if I went back up here to the top, uh, I can click add a new slide. And this, again, would just continue in um, adding in layers, adding in layers. I'm going to make a couple of quick best practices when you're using a slideshow, OK? Best practices. Please don't do more than four slides all the way around, because nobody's really going to sit there and look at slides five, six, seven, and eight. Plus, that's really going to load down your, your uh, speed of your whole website loading up and presenting to your viewers. So be sure to keep it around two to three slides max. And then if you have other content, just change it out consistently and give something fresh for people to look at. Be sure to subscribe to our channel because now I'm going to be doing a series on the Rev Slider. I'll have a couple of videos even this week um, produced and, and put out here to, to walk you through some things. If you have questions specifically about the Revolution Slider, will you put them in the description box below and I'll do my best to answer them or to, to connect you guys over with the Theme Punch authors of this incredible plugin. Have a great day. I hope this helped you. Bye, y'all. See you next WordPress Wednesday. Bye.